this is 2007 uh, BC free response 3. We're back at the free response. This is a calculator question because in 2007 uh, you could use calculator on free responses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so we're given uh, r equals 2 and r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta, both shown in this diagram. Uh, again, my picture much worse than the AP's picture. Uh, the curves intersect at theta equals 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. We're given that information. Part A. Let r be the region that is closed in the graph of r equals 2 and also inside the graph of r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Uh, which is shaded in this picture, uh, find the area of R. Okay, so the trick here is that there's two distinct areas, right? There's the area, the like Pac-Man area here, right, which is inside the circle. And to find that, we actually, we can either integrate um, or we can uh, do it slightly easier, which is recognize that we can identify what percentage of the circle that is pretty easily and then just times the area by the percentage that we're seeking. Um, and then there's the other piece, right, which is the, the piece that like Pac-Man's eating or maybe it's like Pac-Man's lipstick, I don't know, but that piece right there. Uh, and that piece we're going to find using polar area in the traditional sense. Um, the, the trick here is if you wanted to integrate this area, you can't integrate from, uh, from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3 because that's not how it works, right? You would have to integrate from an equivalent uh, value that is like the smaller value to the, to the higher value, right? Because uh, this is actually the area you want. If you did it the other way, uh, it would not work. Okay, so um, so you'd have to integrate from like 4 pi over 3 to the other way to treat this is uh, instead of treating it as 2 pi over 3, you could call it 8 pi over 3, but technically it's not mathematically right. But if you were trying to find the quantity, you could do that. So uh, in order to find this area in part A, right, essentially the area boils down into two pieces, right? It boils down into this chunk of the circle, right? Um, and if you remember that a pi over 3 is 60 degrees, essentially what you're missing here is 60 degrees of the circle and another 60 degrees. So you're missing 120 degrees of the circle. 120 out of 360 means you're missing one third of the circle. So you could find the Pac-Man area, right? This Pac-Man area is two thirds times pi r squared because that's just a circle, right? So that's the Pac-Man area, right? Plus, if you wanted the other area, which is like sort of the like weird curvy, like Pac-Man's green lipstick area, right? Um, that you could use the arc length, or I'm sorry, the area of the polar curve for using the three plus two cosine. Uh, theta. So that would be one half the integral from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3 of the r squared, which would be 3 plus 2 cosine of theta quantity squared with respect to theta. And you just have to write that down because it's a calculator section, so you can make your calculator do the heavy lifting. Um, but again, the trick here is that the better way to find the Pac-Man shape is to not use calc, but to use geometry. So uh, so notice I have them in here. I put R1 as the 2 and R2 as the more complicated curve because that's the order they were given to me. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and type this in. So if you want to type 2 thirds pi times a 4, you can. If you just wanted to call it an 8 thirds pi, that's fine. Right, so I'm going to get it, or an 8 pi over 3 is also fine. Right, so that's that quantity, right, plus math 9, right? I always forget the 0.5. Sorry, see, 0.5. Uh, 0.5, math 9, vers over to polar, pick R2, quantity squared, comma, with respect to theta, from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. All right, I double check everything's right. I always check for the 0.5 in the squared because, again, if I'm going to do something dumb, it's one of those. And I hit enter, and I should get a 10.370, which I do. That's awesome. So again, the AP is not going to care about you knowing how to enter this in your calculator, but you have to know how to enter it in your calculator. So I did 0.5 math 9, which was function integrate, r2 quantity squared with respect to theta from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And that's how I got this. Again, the AP does not care about your calculator skills, but you need them. All right, part B. A particle moving with non-zero velocity along the polar curve given by this r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta has position x of t comma y of t at time, theta e uh, at time t, with theta equals 0 when t equals 0. Uh, the, this particle moves along the curve such that dr dt equals dr d theta. Find the value of dr dt at theta equals pi over 3 and interpret your answer in terms of the motion of the particle. Okay, so... Here's what we know. We know that in part B, we want dr dt at the moment when theta equals pi over 3, and that that is apparently the same as dr d theta at, at the moment when theta is pi over 3. Well, my calculator can do certain things in polar, right, because they told us that dr d theta and dr dt are the same. 
One of the things that my calculator can do if I second calc, uh, so I hit second calc, I can dr d theta, right? Now, I only want it for r2, right? So I'm going to turn off my r1 curve by highlighting the equals and then hitting enter, and now you notice it's off. And I'm going to go ahead and hit graph, right? And you'll see the, the more complicated curve. So if I go to second calc and pick dr d theta, I can go ahead and type in pi over 3, and it'll find my dr d theta at that time. Now, that's the fastest way to do that, right? So the fastest way to do it is using graphing in that sense, right? Uh, and I'll get negative 0.1732, right? And that's fine. So that was the first part of my answer. Um, so that's one way to do it, right? The other way to do it is to quit out of this, and you could have gone to math 8, which is n derive. You could derive r2 with respect to theta at pi over 3. And that'll give you the same answer, and it's fine, okay? Uh, sorry, it's not the same answer as the one above. It's the same answer as what I wrote here, because that's one above is the area. So um, same answer, totally fine, but you need to know how to derive it. So the first thing they asked us to do was find the quantity. The next thing they asked us to do uh, was describe its motion. So here's the thing. This is how dr dt is changing, right? Like how r is changing with respect to time. But r of pi over 3 is a 2, uh, sorry, my bad, is a 3 plus a 2 cosine of pi over 3, which is a half. So it's a 4. So here's the idea dr dt is negative, but r is positive. So what that means is that the particle is moving closer to the origin. So essentially, uh, because my quantity, my r is positive, but my r is getting shorter, right? So these two in conjunction, right, this being less than zero and this being greater than zero, mean that the particle is moving towards the pole or the origin, right? The pole or the origin, which are the same spot, right? We call it an origin when we're in Cartesian coordinates. Uh, we call it a pole when we're in polar. So particle is moving towards the pole. Again, the relationship here is that because r is positive and dr dt is negative, uh, they're in opposite directions so that, that r is getting shorter. If r had been negative and dr dt had been also negative, then r would be getting more negative, which means still longer, just moving away in a certain direction. So uh, it's the opposite signs that mean it's getting closer. Part C. Uh, for the particle described in part B, dy dt equals dy d theta, find the value of dy dt at theta equals pi over 3. Interpret uh, your answer in terms of the motion of the particle. Okay, so same basic problem, but we need to know the relationship between y stuff. So uh, remember that the relationship between polar and Cartesian is basically Soka, Toa, and Pythagorean theorem, right? So if we have some r and a y coordinate and an x coordinate and a theta, right? y is r sine theta, right? And it's worth just memorizing that because it's going to come up a lot. Uh, x is r cosine theta, but if you don't have it memorized, it is basically Soka Toa, right? Because the sine of theta would be the opposite over the hypotenuse y over r. So y is r sine theta. Okay, so you want to find dy d theta, right? Now, that's not a thing that you're able to find in your calculator explicitly. There are other ways you can do it. So, uh, so if I want to find dy d theta, right? And this is, oh, this is part C, my bad. Uh, so R, in this case, is this guy, right? So so this is my R of theta, right? You can do one of two things here. You can either go ahead and write, like, it's not a terrible idea if you, it depends on your preference, really, 3 plus 2 cosine theta uh, sine theta, right? Uh, so you could derive this by hand, right? It's a product rule. You'd have a U and a V. There's another way to do this, though. The other way to do this if you want to kind of be a lazy bum, right? So if I want dy d theta, I can make my calculator find this, right? I can make my calculator find this at theta equals pi over 3, and I'm going to show you how. There are a couple different options. Uh, you could actually straight up derive it, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? The other interesting option is if you go to your r's, you could type that r3 is your 3 plus 2 cosine theta, which is really just what you called r2, right? So if I go to polar and pick r2, times the sine of theta. Now, you don't have to do this, but that's what I did. So what I did is I actually went, I actually put this in my calculator. I made this r3. Now, knowing that I made this r3, if I wanted dy d theta, remember I called it an r in this situation, I could, if I wanted, do n derive 
of r3, which is the thing I called my y, with respect to theta at pi over 3, and that'll do the, the work for me. Now, your other option is you could derive this by hand. You could do a product rule, u dv plus v du, and that's fine, right? Um, but an interesting side note, and actually, if I want, I could even use the other shortcut I've shown you for taking a derivative in polar. Uh, I could just do the second calc and then d, d, r, d theta, because again, my r in this place is taking place in my y. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to quit out of this and do math 8, right? Uh, I'm going to pick the thing I called r3 because that's what's standing in place for this y, right, uh, with respect to theta at pi over 3, right, and it should derive it for me. And sure enough, I get a 0.5, uh, and that is what you'd get if you did it by hand as well. Now, it's a 0.5 with a bunch of zeros because your calculator is approximating. If you found the actual answer, it would just straight up be a 0.5. So I get that it's this value, right, that's my dy d theta. They asked me to find it. Um, and then we're going to answer the same basic way we answered last time, which is we're going to find the value of actual y, right? Um, so y of pi over 3 is going to be, if we plug a pi over 3 in here, right? There's a couple different ways to do this. The other option is if you want, since it's your r, you could actually just hit trace, right? And then if I hit trace, if I go ahead and hit uh, pi, so if I hit trace and I hit pi over 3, it's going to give me the y value at that point, and the y value is apparently a 3. I think I believe that. Do I believe that? Root 3 over 2. I don't think I believe that. I don't think it's a 3. Because uh, I think if I plugged in pi over 3, I'd get this is a 4. And I get root 3 over 2. So I get 2 root 3. I don't believe this thing. Oh, it's because I get you. It's because I want the actual art, right, because I made y r. Ha, tricky. Can't do that. Okay. So if I plug this in, uh, I get this is a 4 times a root 3 over 2, right? The trick here is if I actually wanted to find the value that I called y here, it's not the y, right? Because what I called y was r sub 3. So it's tricky. You got to be careful when you put stuff in your calculator. Point being, I get this is positive, and I get this is also positive. So, as we discussed in the last example, what this is saying is that the particle, now, but the trick is this isn't about moving away from the origin, because r is your distance from the origin, right? y is your distance from the x-axis, right? And I should point out that they actually asked me to find dy dt uh, here, not dy d theta, but they told me they're the same. So I'm going to add that line to cover myself, right? So this is the rate at which the particle's position from the x-axis is changing with respect to time. So what this is saying is the particle is above the x-axis, right? That's what, that's what y measures, is how far you are from the x-axis. And you're getting more positive. So since they're the same sign, what I can infer from this is that the particle is moving up away from the x-axis, right? Because I'm already above the x-axis, and now I'm moving up. The combination of moving up and already being above the x-axis means that I'm moving up and away from the x-axis. And that's what they want.